Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy, with the Wolf Song Cards by Lou Hartman. So I had never heard of these cards. And saw them on, um, oh, where did I see them? On Shop Goodwill, Shop Goodwill, at an at a online Goodwill shop. And I thought, well, there were like 60 cards or something. They had them all lined out. It was a lot of cards, and I have a weakness for animal decks. So I decided to give it a try. Also because it was very cheap. <laughs> um, and I will say that what gets you, if you ever use the Shop Goodwill, is their um, the shipping. For some reason, they think they have to ship FedEx, and it's just ridiculous, <laughs> the, the cost of the shipping. But anyway, so this was copyrighted 1998, so a late 1990s deck. As you saw, this is a very slim, slender guidebook. I don't know that it's a guidebook, maybe a cue book. Um, it's got some publisher type cards uh, with, and this is the back. And the borders also have like little carvings. It's supposed to look like little carvings on it. Carvings into wood. But it says here, the essence of the Wolf Song cards is change. The deck is based on the premise that life's only constant force is change. Change whether day to night, season to season, or even daylight to standard time pervades everything that we do wish and dream. The achievement of any goal is also a function of change. So that's the basic philosophy he's, he's coming in with. Um, and the thing that I found as I went through these cards that, that is unique about these cards, I think, um, is it's an animal deck that almost focuses, instead of having the widest variety of animals, although it certainly has a wide variety of animals, is that for some types of animals, like the wolf, and it's wolves, bears, owls, and foxes. Um, that have the most repetition. So as you will see here, he has timber wolf, arctic wolf, red wolf, and gray wolf. And that is four, and they, he uses them in a spread. And he mentions, for example, that this has all of the seasons in it. So you see it's got little flowers, pushing through the snow. It has that um, autumn grass there, and then in the background it's got summer trees. So so he's serious <laughs> about um, getting all of the different types in there. And I'll read you from the guidebook. It's it's very short, uh, but but it's it's pithy. It, it gives, uh, it gives you a strong sense of uh, the philosophy behind this. So here again we have gray fox, red fox, arctic fox, and kit fox, and desert kit fox. And here we have the night, the night time. Do we have different times of day, kind of evening? Maybe morning. Um, what's in the guidebook is very, very scanty for each card. It's like, um, like this, like a sentence. So I think you know. I think it would be easy. I think he he tries to portray the keywords or the key sentence in the picture. 
but um, it might end up being a, an intuitive deck in large measure. So here we have Black Bear, Grizzly Bear, Polar Bear, and Brown Bear. And again, that may have to do with seasons. Um, for Owls, Horned Owl, Barn Owl, Snowy Owl, Screech Owl. So again, four. And from there, I'm just going to go through certain um, groups of animals. So I'm going to continue from the owls. I'm going to continue with um, birds, and particularly birds of prey is what we're starting with. So we have sparrowhawk, peregrine falcon, osprey, red-tailed hawk, bald eagle, uh, ring-necked pheasant. Go what happened? <laughs> I thought I was thinking that when I saw the bald, I thought, I thought they had a golden eagle in here. Okay, so golden eagle. <laughs> the pheasant is straying because. Well, yeah, it should be over there. Okay. So next, so that's like five or six birds of prey. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six birds of prey. Uh, and of course, that's not in including the owls, which are also birds of prey. Um, so the next, we have water birds, blue heron, wood duck, goose, and that's it. That's it for them. Then we just have some perching birds, crow, and hummingbird, um, red-headed woodpecker, and then we have these two ground birds, ring-necked pheasant and the turkey. So these um, animals are definitely very focused on North America, except there's an ocelot in here. Um, and I don't know, maybe they have ocelots in, in Florida or Texas or something, but it's, uh, it would be on the fringe. And so I personally, and, and I would even say um, the American West. So I can personally relate to a lot of these animals. I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen a lot of them. Um, so here we go. On to the cats. Jaguar, panther, lynx, ocelot, and bobcat. Is that the last? That's it. Bobcat. So, next I have, I think I have these ordered kind of according to size. I think the caribou is the smallest of this group. I'm not sure. I've never met a caribou. <laughs> um, but that was kind of my intent. So there's, we're entering the hooved animals. So we're starting, um, and I, I did this, I did it according to antlers. So I'm doing antlers and horns, I think is how I decided to do it. But anyway. So here's our caribou. We have more than one kind of deer here. We have white-tailed deer. I'm sorry, I'm not getting this in here very well. Mule deer, elk, moose. So here we are with the horned animals, buffalo, doll sheep, big horn sheep, <clears throat> mountain goat, and then the non-cloven hooved animal, the horse. All right, rodents, starting with the smallest and the closest to the ground, but um, you'll find, so I'm doing mouse and then I'm, and chipmunk, and then I'm going into the, the animals that really live in the ground. So mouse, chipmunk, ferret, rabbit, groundhog, Badger, Wolverine. 
So raccoon, I don't consider, I don't, I think it's, Maybe wolverines do go up and climb trees, but I don't think of that as their, their primary habitat. However, with raccoons and possums, these to me are tree treeing mammals. So raccoon, possum, gray squirrel, beaver. So now we're back on the ground. We're in the water. Water rodents, beaver, river otter. And then two reptiles. We've got frog and turtle. So I really like the animals that are included here. I'm not 100% sure what to think of um, a lot of the repetition of certain um, species and going deeply into their types. But I'm not opposed to it. So I'm kind of open to, to what's going on. So let's take a look at this. I might even try the spread that's in here. Um, so it says, um, the wolf song cards were designed to be used as tools of self-discovery. A guide to provoke self-awareness, inspiration, to regain inner balance and to initiate change. Use the cards as a starting point and apply their meaning to your life. And then it goes into change again. So each of the wolves stands for a different time. So the timber wolf stands for positive or natural change, as in the passing of the seasons. All four seasons are depicted on the card. The gray wolf is, uh, represents necessary change. So positive or natural change, necessary change. Um, and then the red wolf is the bearer of unexpected change. So the red wolf is kind of the tower card. Um, and then the Arctic wolf signifies resistance to change. So each of the wolves is kind of a, a type of change. Positive, um, positive, necessary, unexpected, and resistance to change. And then it talks about single card spreads and... Um, and then this. So in this particular spread, this wolf song spread, it's, it's about uh, using all of the uh, wolves that we just talked about as signifiers. So you're, you're laying down each of these cards. What are we supposed to have? So the north is supposed to be, um, oops, get that box out of there. Timber wolf is supposed to be positioned in the north. Oops. Gray wolf to the east. Red wolf to the south, appropriately, and then the art K, you can't see them all. <laughs> it's supposed to be like that. And then the rest of the deck is supposed to sit in the middle. And then you're supposed to pull cards. Deal a card to each wolf in northeast, south, and west order. The message of each card can be related to the type of change de designated by its corresponding wolf card. The understanding and inter interpretation of the wolf's message will offer insight into your personal situation. So let's let's give it a try. Why not? Because um, I'm curious and I've been stalked by the tower. And I did my little sort of ordering fetishy thing. <laughs> um, so 
so I need to unorder it. I need to disorder it. It shuffles okay, not super duper. Uh, again, I have kind of weak hands. But it's, it's shuffling okay. It's ruffle shuffling okay. Certainly the cards are standing up quite nicely. They're a little bit bent, but not terribly. So the art on this kind of varies. Some of it I, I like quite a bit and some of it, I mean it's all the same artist clearly, but um, some animals maybe uh, he was, I mean, I'm guessing it was the same person. Um, and some animals maybe he was more in touch with or something <laughs> than, than others. Uh, oh, that one felt good. I'm going to leave it right right there. That felt really good. Okay, so we're supposed to do north. North first, right? <clears throat> Gotta fit the deck in there. North. Oh my goodness. Canada Goose. East. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm in the birds. <laughs> and I'm staying in the birds. All right, so much for shuffling. I'm stuck in the birds, and I've got and I've got a reptile at the bottom, just like I had a reptile at the bottom to begin with. Um, so let's go ahead and think about this. So we have. Timberwolf. So this is natural change. And of course, that is what a goose does. Natural change feels the pull of going either north or south according to the weather. Or more sophisticated maybe than the weather, but no weather. So let's see. This they don't have numbers. And he gives different associations to the different animals. He's not following. Some of them are quite recognizable if you know the um, associations, like from either the medicine cards or um, Ted Andrews' Animal Speak book. But others, um, he departs a little bit from that. So Canadian goose, Canada goose, travel, migration, strength to do what must be done. So that's actually a beautiful... Um, a beautiful card to have there for natural change for me uh, in that I am part of the change that I am in the process of and that I have started to initiate is um, with the expectation of eventually having to care for parents um, and so this to me is just saying that 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 travel or migration going to stay with them um, and having the strength to do what must be done is these are things that will happen in their own time at a natural pace, so to speak. All right, so um, necessary change is the snowy owl for necessary change. So where's our snowy owl? Secrets, hidden knowledge, understanding to be gained. necessary change. To me, I guess that's saying that um, I need to either study something or look into something. I'm thinking, how do you change secrets? How do you, why is it necessary to change secrets or hidden knowledge? I mean, maybe there's something about what I'm doing with the cards that needs to change. Um, The word level, like changing levels of understanding. So that needs to change. So interesting. Can't say I understand that as clearly as I understand the Canadian goose. Um, so the next one in the south is unexpected change. 
And here is the screech owl. And there's something I just love. Um, and he has these carvings in the in the wood too. Um, <clears throat> that some of these animals who kind of get neglected, like chipmunk <laughs> and screech owl. I love that there's a screech owl as opposed to the more magnificent snowies and um, <clears throat> and great horned owls and stuff. So screech owl. Screech owl. Cooperation domestic organization. So that is unexpected change. Oh dear. And, and I say oh dear because I'm thinking of um you know how I've got my animals arranged and my household in general, cooperation, domestic organization. It says unexpected change variables involved or alternatives available. Not all bad though. I don't know why it would be unexpected. Um, unless maybe somebody who I'm trying to get to work on my house and ends up not working out, <laughs> not showing up, not getting stuff on time, something costing too much. Um, I could definitely sh see shifts like that. Okay, so let's go on to the Arctic Wolf, which is resistance to change. So this is change I'm resisting. I'm kind of wondering if I'm resisting this change because it's, it's um, you know, <laughs> it wasn't clear to me. So it makes me wonder if that's resistant also. Um, <clears throat> crow. Yep. I could see how it might be nice to um, put some numbers on here somewhere. Crow. Resistance to change. And this is provider of information. Communication. Somehow I wonder if these two aren't related. So how am I resisting communication? Or re resisting either a provider of information or resisting information being provided? I don't know. Let's look to the turtle for an answer. Now, in in the spread that's in the book, you're not supposed to have this card up, right? I just did that. <laughs> um, so turtle. Reliability. I think actually making these so incredibly simple actually makes it more likely to potentially memorize. And I could see even jotting, they're so brief, jotting some words on here since they've got symbols anyway. Um, I don't know. But I'll say this, there's nothing I particularly dislike about it. There's nothing that's making me say, oh, I don't think this one's going to last. You know, I like it. I like it. So turtle is reliability, trust, and instincts. So maybe I'm resisting reliability in, in, in information. I kind of wonder, I was just thinking if it has to do with um, resistance to communication I'm getting actually from my animals.
And this might be that sort of thing also. Something that necessarily needs to change is understanding some of the things going on with my animals. So I don't know if anybody has uh, watched my my flailing attempts at reading um, pip decks, but the last one with the Golden Visconti Sforza, I was really kind of clueless while I was doing the readings, like what is this about? And then later, um, when I was working with one of my dogs, I thought, oh, that's what the water in the fire is about. That's what the Queen of Cups and the, and the Queen of, of Wands is about. It's my, um, the guide, my guide <laughs> is one of my dogs. Um, you know, I have a lab that's um, a very socially intelligent, maybe my only socially intelligent dog. Um, and and I see the cards essentially telling me to use her. She is my guide for my terrier, who is just a an aggressive freak. So <laughs> so um, so that was an interesting mes message to come through, and has got me thinking about attempting to take them out together. Uh, not in my neighborhood where there's other dogs that are likely to be loose, but in a controlled environment like uh, PetSmart or Lowe's or something like that. So that was interesting. Um, and so that's why these two are starting to strike me that way. It's because that's swimming around my head right now anyway. All right, so there it is. There's the Wolf Song cards by Lou Hartman. I wonder whatever happened to Lou Hartman. Maybe I'll look him up and uh, see if there's anything about him online. All right, everybody. That's it for today. And I will catch you again soon.